Join us now by Chronic Hoosier. How are you, sir? I am so glad to be back. It's the absolute best week of the year, and I am absolutely here for it. You know, it's not warm enough, but uh, you look outside and it looks beautiful. It looks like tournament time. Um, so we'll pretend that it's warmer out there, especially with the fact that I know that I'm getting on a plane tomorrow uh, to go to a place that is reportedly getting between six and 16 inches of snow. What are you going to do? But if there's any week of the year where you can go completely dark for four consecutive days and never have to step foot outside, it's this week. Now, unfortunately, you're going to have to travel to the gym and whatnot. Uh, but, you know, this this is the vasectomy week when you're just going to plant yourself on a couch and do nothing but watch college basketball nonstop for four straight days. And it's it's seriously the best thing in the world. Oh, if I could – if I had a job where I could take off and just do nothing for, for four days – it would be Thursday through Sunday night. There's just no question about it. And I I miss not getting to see a lot of the games, but nobody gets to see all the games. There's so damn many of them. They're hard to keep up with even when they're on, especially in the early on in the early going. My God, there's 32 games going or 16 on each day. Um, but it's I, this tournament, there is – First of all, I don't know if you can consider anything an upset in this tournament almost. Um, y yes, there there are, but but what we've seen, Chronic, it's we have seen virtually every team, no matter how good, get beat by someone. Look at Purdue. All right, Purdue is a number one seed. They got beat at home by a team that didn't even make the tournament. Probably should have made it, but – that's another argument, but they didn't. Uh, and they're a number one seed. That just shows you how difficult and crazy this is. But Indiana is in uh they have a tough, they have a tough draw, man. Kent State is is a uh, a really good team. I talked earlier about you know Michael Lewis coaching a ball state, having to deal with them. Uh he won 20 games in that league, but there was three teams above them. That, the Mac was tough this year. Yeah, no doubt. This is going to be probably one of the most chaotic NCAA tournaments in, in, in recent history, if not in, in tournament history, quite frankly. Uh, but that's that's what makes March so magic, uh, quite honestly. On any given day, anybody can knock anybody off when given the chance in this. And uh, it's this is one of those things where, you, as an Indiana fan, you start seeing uh, a, a lot of the national prognosticators picking Indiana as their sexy dark horse four seed to make it to the final four. And, you know, personally for me, um, I, I don't care about the final four at this point. I don't even care about Sunday at this point, just survive Friday night and do it one game at a time. Um, it's, it sounds so simplistic, but that's truly what this tournament is, what every tournament is, but you get the sense this tournament especially is going to be just get through your next round. Don't focus on anything down the road because you let up for a second. And I, like you said, whether you're Purdue, Indiana, I don't care who you are in this tournament right now, uh, nobody's safe. There is no clear-cut favorite, I, I feel like, to win it. And uh, I, I think that's going to make for an awesome product. Uh, I think it's going to also make for a uh, – a very unexpected and, and perhaps a, a frustrating uh, tournament product as well. So if, if you're Indiana, uh, you just got to focus on Kent State and absolutely nothing else. Uh, short memories at this point. Um, you know you know who you are. You know what you want to do. Uh, you just got to go out there and do it and pray to God that you do it better than the other team because this is it. Uh, we've reached the point where there is officially – there's one game worth of runway left for every player uh, who's indicated he's taken off this year, in, including those who probably haven't, like Jalen hood Chifino. And, uh, you know, this is going to be a completely different basketball team uh, after this season. Who knows what the roster is going to look like, but you're only given one more game. That's the only thing guaranteed in front of you, so you absolutely have to make the most of it. Leave it all out on the floor and just pray that when the whistle blows, you're moving on because uh, you do that six times and you're putting a banner up. You know, you do that two times and you're in the sweet 16. Four times, you, you've uh, you've made the final four, which uh, those are all very, very lofty goals for Indiana. Ultimately, the ultimate goal is at stake. But at the end of the day, it's just one game. 
just win one game and then keep repeating that over and over. Uh, but I wouldn't even focus on the repeat part right now because Indiana is going to have more than their hands full with Kent State. And, uh, you know, I think as we saw in the Big Ten tournament, this is a team that that very easily could make a run. This is a team that could very easily uh, bow out in the first round. Uh, I think a lot of it's going to hinge on, you know, some of the simplest parts of the game. Can Indiana keep the ball in front of them and stay out of rotation and stop leaving three-point shooters open? Uh, because at this point, I think that the playbook against Indiana is probably uh, in bold face print for most opposing coaches on what they're going to need to do to beat the Hoosiers. I'm uh, getting a little nervous as to how much we've been talking about uh, the the wildness of this March Madness tournament. It makes me feel like now it's going to be just straight chalk or as close to Chuck as we've had because everybody talks about how crazy they expect this March Madness to be because of uh, be, because of how crazy the college basketball season was. But to your point, Chronic, uh, and one thing I know you, we talk about one game at a time, but it's hard for me because you look at the way this Indiana team has played and you go back to January, and I've said this a couple times on this show, so I apologize for sounding like a broken record to our listeners and, and people watching, but – I feel like in January, you look. If you would have taken the way Indiana was playing in January, you look at this draw. You say we've got a great chance to go to the Final Four. The last month, they have not been able to string together two games to save their life. They have not played well consecutively since early February, maybe. And that's what gives. I feel like there's a chance that Indiana looks locked in, ready to go, plays well against Kent State, and you think this is the Indiana team that can get back to the final four, make a deep run, and then follows it up with a Sunday performance that leaves you very disappointed. Yeah, I mean, since, uh, you know, with the exception of that that uh, season-ending, regular season-ending overtime win against uh, Michigan, followed up by the tournament win against Maryland, that's the first time the Hoosiers have been able to string consecutive wins together since uh, early February when they did the Purdue Rutgers Michigan streak. Yeah. So it's certainly been a lot of up and down for this team um, in, in a lot of whiplash fashion, uh, quite honestly. And I think that's the thing that, that gives me pause heading into tournament play, um, you know, especially after the highs of like the Purdue win uh, on yeah. the road to completely lay an egg against Iowa. Uh, this team has been pretty consistently inconsistent throughout the better part of the season. You know, you take away that stretch, after they had the, the players only meeting following Penn State and they went on that tear uh, in, in, you know, back half of January into early February, um, you know, they at least showed you that they can focus enough to get back on track. And they were wildly off track at that point. Um, what we've seen probably is some sort of a regression of the mean since then. Um you know, with losses to Northwestern, Michigan State, Iowa, and then and most recently Penn State. Um you know, let's not forget a lot of those <laughs> have not been close for most of the time. So for a team that's that's as capable as Indiana, I've said it, you know, like you mentioned, throughout the season, I don't want to be a broken record. Uh, they have demonstrated every bit as, as much grit as they have flaws. And uh, none of that changes come tournament play. So you are who you are. You are what your record says you are. And, uh, you know, the record says Indiana can be a little bit inconsistent at times. So, you know, realistically, what's the chances that now all of a sudden they put together the their first six-game streak of the season, uh, at least since they got out of the cupcake portion of the season? Who knows? Uh, but, again, none of that matters. What, you right. know, look at North Carolina. Uh, I think they are the perfect yeah. example of uh, what they were able to accomplish last year. Uh, you know, you look back at it and say, well, clearly that was a blip. That's not truly who this team was. It doesn't matter. They did it. They were able to yeah. put together that run. And uh, if you can, if you can cohese together and get your stuff going and get everybody on the same page, most importantly, uh, you got three weekends. That's it. You got three weekend tournaments basically in front of you. And if the guys can get on a roll, uh, the sky's the limit for them. So uh, it, it's going to be fascinating to see because, quite honestly, you've got one of the greatest Indiana players in program history who's really looking to cement his legacy. And, and Trace has made no bones about why he came back and what the goal was. And then you pair that with a guy like Hood Shafino, who's who's clearly playing for a draft position right now. Um, I think Indiana's got a fascinating matchup. I likened it last week after the Maryland or the uh, the Maryland win to an NBA jam. You know, when you've got a big like that and a guard like that, if you can get them turned all the way up together, 
look out, it can be really dangerous. But as we saw against Penn State, uh, it takes five guys to defend the floor, uh, and, and they're going to have to figure out a way to get everybody involved because, quite frankly, what we saw in the United Center on Saturday is not going to cut a come tournament play on the defensive side.